Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Devotees of Jesus. This is your host, Julian Phillips. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sweet Lord and Savior, you know all of the schemes that you have for us. Give us the grace to relax and submit to you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. He sat down and his disciples gathered around him. Then he spoke and began to teach them. Happy are those who have the spirit of the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy are the gentle, they shall own the earth. Happy are those who hunger and thirst for justice, they shall be satisfied. Happy are the merciful, for they shall find mercy. Happy are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. Happy are those who work for peace, they shall be called children of God. Happy are those who are persecuted for the cause of justice, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you, when people insult you and persecute you and speak all kinds of evil against you because you are my followers. Be glad and joyful, for a great reward is kept for you in God. This is how these people persecuted the prophets who lived before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Afterlife. What a mystery. More than one faith has a telling of the tale, what happens when we breathe our last. One way in which we can get a glimpse into the afterlife is looking at birth. As I understand, babies cry when they are born because of the sensation of air hitting their lungs. Babies, for the time that they are in their mother's womb, breathe an amniotic fluid that is rich in oxygen. So this breathing of air is a new experience it is a shock perhaps we can say the breathing our last experience is something let me use the word of a surprise and just as the baby certainly cannot stay in the womb forever it is meant to exist outside the womb and live many years outside the womb we are not meant to roam this earth physically forever. We are meant to go to a bigger place, if you will, and roam there. This process of being conceived, being born, and then breathing our last is something all humans agree happens and is unavoidable. We can tell ourselves what we like. This day of breathing our last has to come. Now, I don't contend that it is set in stone, but I do contend it is a surety. So, given that that is a surety, what happens in between our being conceived and our breathing our last has something to do with us. How should we live? Jesus here provides his guidelines for a happy life. Some of them are easy to digest. So, for example, happy are those who work for peace. They shall be called children of God. Even those of no faith will contend those who seek to end conflict and prevent conflict are doing a tremendous good. Oh, but let's look at this one. Happy are you when people insult you, persecute you. Be glad and joyful. Kind of tough to take. Well, with that one, a great reward is kept for you in God. The earth has many lovely things for us to sample, but they all pale in comparison to the joy that is paradise, to the joy that is heaven. We have to make a choice. Where do we want to go? 
And if we say we want to go to heaven, we need to be on the road to heaven. And the road, of, the road to heaven has a certain look. The look of the road to heaven, if you will, is that it is filled with people who are ignoring reality. They are ignoring insults, they are ignoring offenses, they are ignoring economic issues, they are ignoring the pandemic. Why? Well, they are supposed to be happy. To be happy, you have to fix your gaze on the things that cause happiness. To put it the other way around, to be happy, you have to take your gaze away from the things that trouble you. The Christian is very mindful that heaven is a real place and that he wants to go there. And what he does is he fixes his mind on heaven. And without knowing it, when he thinks whatever he thinks that causes him to be happy, he fixes his mind on heaven. This is why, regardless of the situation, Christians are there and they are joyful. Because wisdom says that our time, our physical time in this body on the earth is, is nothing compared to, let's say, any one mountain. Any one mountain will outlive all of us and has already outlived countless generations. So what we are to hold on to is really the first beatitude. Happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I mentioned before that a vagrant told a priest, he said, Father, you know the difference between me and the rich? I know I am a vagrant. The rich haven't figured that out yet. And what this says is that you are truly happy when you just throw your hands up in the ears and, and say, Jesus, you take over. My shoulders are not broad as yours. My intellect is not as sharp as yours. I don't have the resources you have. Jesus, you take over. The people who abandon themselves to Jesus, these are the people who witness the miracles. Oh Jesus, I abandon myself to you. Jesus, you take over.